thank you. Yes, uh, Jim Babb, this is a great surprise. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, well, it's great to be back at Democracy Unplugged. Uh, I want to thank Bob and, and all the organizers. Uh, but, you know, I love the idea of unplugging democracy. I think it's a great idea. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> great to be with you. Um, so Bob asked me to talk about the right to privacy. So uh, I figured the first thing we should do is clarify what we're talking about when we talk about privacy, the state or condition of being free from being observed or disturbed by other people. Pr pretty simple. So, um, you know, our right to privacy is violated when somebody forcibly interferes with that condition. Now, we can voluntarily give up some privacy, but it's not an intrusion unless it's involuntary. So the, the right to privacy is usually framed this way. We need, they tell us we need this balance between privacy versus security. And this comes up all the time. It might be discussion of airport security or about the NSA snooping, but they're constantly telling us you have to have a balance. You have to sacrifice some privacy for security. Well, I think that's a load of crap. Um, honestly, because what we're really talking about is privacy versus statism. Uh, because privacy is an essential component of security. Without Privacy, we don't really have security. The right to privacy is intertwined in so many of our other rights, whether it's our right to travel, our right to contract, our right to, to assemble, uh, our right to self-defense. They all have a component of privacy within them. So um, if you don't have privacy, you don't have security. So I want to start by just throwing out that false paradigm of privacy versus security. So uh, with the exception of the, maybe an occasional peeping Tom, uh, there's, really only, there's really one major threat to privacy, and that's government employees. Those, that is the major uh, intrusion on our privacy. So if you value security, then you have to value privacy. If you value privacy, then you must oppose the state. So th that's my topic I really want to discuss is privacy versus statism. Okay, so just to clarify, what is statism? Statism, statism is the belief that there's a legitimate right for one group of people to rule another people. Um, it's the belief in the legitimacy of the state. So first I'm going to review some of the major threats to privacy, then I'm going to discuss the solutions uh, and some of the available countermeasures that we have. Okay, so now when you think of invasions of privacy, what's the, what are the institutions you think of? Could it might be the TSA or the NSA, some of these really bad violators? Well, the worst that I can think of might be the IRS, okay? <laughs> when you think about it, they, they demand to know where you work, who your family members are, what charities you support, where you bank, and if you're a business owner, they, need to, they demand to know who your customers are, who your vendors are, your employees, your contractors. They need to know every single thing about you. Um, as a small business owner myself, every year I spend about $750 with my accountant just assembling the information that they're going to steal from me. <laughs> so I actually get to pay to have my privacy violated. So, uh, you know, do you like privacy? You gotta get rid of the IRS. Okay, now, the TSA. Okay, you know, it, it's just too easy, okay? <laughs> I mean, this is the, the I mean, these blue-shirted guys are the poster child for privacy invasions. Um, in 2010, they did a major rollout of these x-ray scanners, and as you can see by some of these pictures, they can tell if a man is circumcised or not, or if a woman is menstruating, okay? That's the level of detail that they demand just for, for traveling, okay? Uh, now, some folks raised a stink about this, Eventually, they, they, they bow to some pressure and they replace the x-ray scanners with some millimeter wave scanners, which is almost the same, and, but it includes some software that supposedly uh, scrambles your genitals so they can't see it. Now, of course, there's a switch that can turn that off at any time, but it has a sign on it that says no peeking. Okay, so so we can we can trust them. Um, now, if you if you opt out of this, you can opt out of that of that kind of new photography. But then you get uh, you get this up here. Okay, now what they're doing there is called an enhanced pat down. Um, 
by the FBI definition, it is a sexual assault, but it's happening millions of times a year in our airports. Um, so I really can't think of a bigger invasion to our privacy than possibly these 70,000 people with the power to put their hands in your pants, okay, literally. So, um, and, and we're, I'm not even addressing the, the power they claim to go through all your belongings and, and your luggage. Okay, so um, just in case anybody thinks this has any security benefit, realize these blue shirted guys have never caught a single terrorist. Um, anyone that wants to actually commit harm has a hundred different ways to go around them. It's, it's just a show. Um, so what they, what they do is widely regarded as security theater. Even uh, congressman, the congressman who created it, John Micah, calls what they're doing a big kabuki dance. So it's just a scam. Um, okay, I don't think we need to go on anymore. Okay, NSA. Now, Ed Snowden recently <laughs> kind of put this on the radar. Um, Ed Snowden said, sitting at my desk, I can wiretap anyone, from your accountant to a federal judge or even the president, if I, if I had a personal email. That's all he needed. Now, although Snowden and Glenn Greenwald have recently made the NSA uh, the national punchline, this agency's actually been around for 60 years. So, okay. Snowden, Snowden revealed that they intercept telephone and internet communications from over a billion people worldwide. They collect metadata of phone calls of over 120 million U.S. Verizon subscribers, as well as internet communications. Um, access to all communications made via Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Yahoo, YouTube, AOL, Skype, Apple, and PalTalk. Okay. Um, incredible. Now, Mussolini said that fascism should be more appropriately called corporatism because it's the merger of state and corporate power. Okay? The NSA is the, is the dream institution for fascists. So, I mean, look at that. That is the ultimate merger between the government and these, you know, important uh, communications companies. Okay, so NSA, obviously, ridiculously huge violators of privacy. Okay, now, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, essential, the essential part of the state is these dotted lines drawn on a map, and politicians are obsessed with anything that crosses over them. Basically, they claim ownership uh, of these imaginary dotted lines. So what they do in the process of these is they feel they have the right to ser basically search anybody they want at any time. Um, authorities do not need a warrant or probable cause to conduct a routine search, okay, in this area, okay, anywhere within 100 miles of the border, okay. Look at, look at that area right there. What that actually encompasses is two-thirds of the United States population. 1.97.4 million people live in this Fourth Amendment free zone. Two-thirds of the country live within 100 miles. So clearly, for people to think you need to have some kind of border patrol and, and lockdown, what you've really done is you've eliminated the Fourth Amendment for two-thirds of the country. Okay. Domestic drones, okay. It's recently, uh, I don't know, people think like cameras flying around in your backyard might be a violation of privacy a little bit. Okay, FAA Air Transportation Modernization Safety Improvement Act permits the feds to fly drones in domestic airspace for surveillance purposes. FAA projects 30,000 drones will be flying around America by 2020. Okay. I don't think we have to say anything more about that. Stop and frisk. Okay, it's not just the federal government. Okay, we've got some serious problems <laughs> with privacy regarding stop and frisk. Okay. <laughs> What's so funny about the dog? dog. <laughs> okay, um, stop and frisk is an assault on neighborhoods in cities like Philly and New York. Uh, we're talking about every year millions, millions of suspicionless searches happening mostly in minority neighborhoods against uh, communities where a lot of people are already on probation. They really, uh, they're really not prepared to deal with this well at all. 
Uh, so the, the police know that and they take advantage of it. Only a tiny percentage of these shakedowns result in actual finding actual bad guys. Uh, I mean, I, I met a guy that told me the way it is for him in his neighborhood. He could be in line at a Chinese restaurant. They just come up and they grab him up against the wall, pat you down, you know, and that's 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 straight out of the Gestapo uh, tactics. And that's what we've got in Philly. That's what we've got in Manhattan right now. Uh, Look what we saw in Boston. Okay, does that look like a privacy violation when, when these guys come knocking on your door and demand to search your home? Insane, insane that that is allowed in this country uh, that, that has supposedly any right to privacy. Um, okay, uh, gun permits. Now, this might be the most dangerous violation of our privacy that exists. Uh, um, these are some graphics that are put up. Uh, there was, there was some, an interactive map made by a newspaper. Um, what they did in 2012, they published the addresses of gun permit holders in these two counties and created an interactive map. And they published it in the newspaper and they said, where are the gun permits in your neighborhood? Look them up. Now, this is a great opportunity for criminals. Uh, I mean, imagine if, you want to, if you're a burglar, you want to find a house that's defenseless. Well, thank you. <laughs> now you've got a map. Um, if you want to steal a gun, you know where to go to find the guns to steal. Uh, if, if certainly rapists will prefer to select a target where they have a good sense that the that the their victim is going to be helpless or unarmed. So again, the the privacy to exercise your right of self defense uh, was violated, and it created an incredibly dangerous situation for everybody in those counties. Uh, the government school webcam. Lower Marion, you guys remember this from a couple of years ago. Okay, There is no government program that will not be twisted into some kind of way to, to violate your privacy. Um, hundreds of thousands of images were taken covertly on student laptops by school officials. Um, pictures of kids in their bedroom, some coming out of the shower. You know, we're talking about minors hundreds of thousands, um, you know, it, it, it might seem harmless, but whatever you ask the government to do, they're going to find a way to turn it into something sick like this. I mean, can you guys imagine, I mean, did, would anybody here actually trust these people with information about your health care? I mean, it's just <laughs> amazing to think where, where this could go. So, all right, we've, we've gone over some of the problems. Um, and obviously the state is the, our number one violator of privacy, so the solution is going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be a free market. And luckily, the free market is delivering some really interesting solutions. Raise your hand if you know what Bitcoin is. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency decentralized, which means you can, trans you can exchange value with people anywhere in the world and, and it's very difficult to trace, it's very difficult to tax, very difficult to control. Very difficult to control. Uh, it's, 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 it is a revolution that is changing, literally changing things right now. Uh, and this is just one, Bitcoin is just one of the cryptocurrencies that are out right now. There's more on the way. Um, everybody here should have their own Bitcoin wallet and, and get, get to know Bitcoin, get to know how to use it because it's, this is a severe, um, a major step in enhancing our privacy. Um, in case you didn't, in case you, you don't want to take my word for it, uh, in a letter to the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs, DHS wrote that they have, quote, been actively investigating the emerging threat and criminal exploitation of virtual currency systems that further transnational criminal operations, okay? So they're scared about it, so that means I'm excited about it. Okay. Um, DHS blamed anonymity in cyberspace and called for an aggressive posture to deal with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So I'd say that's proof, proof of impact right there. Uh, the Tor project uh, for anonymity online. Does anybody use Tor here? Uh, the, the Tor browser connects to the internet through an ingenious network that masks your exit point. So when you visit a website, the, that person won't know where you are, uh, which is brilliant. And in fact, there's something called Tails Linux, 
which is an entire free open source operating system that you can run from a thumb drive. You, let's just say you want to communicate securely. You plug this into your laptop, you boot from it, it connects all internet traffic, goes through the Tor network, so it scrambles the in and outs, and it does not record anything on the boot drive at all. So there's, this basically renders key loggers and other spy software basically useless when you use it correctly. So it's a, it's a brilliant development. Uh, Silent Circle is an app you can run on your phone to have encrypted phone and text messages. Uh, it's, a, it's a paid service, but what, you know, what a great idea. People want to be able to talk on the phone and not have it eavesdrop. This is a tool for them. Um, anonymous, okay, we've got decentralized hacker, decentralized hacker collectives like Anonymous. Uh, these people are sort of shifting this one-sided uh, privacy relationship by exposing the, what the state is doing and exposing their government spying programs and you know sort of give, give, giving us a little bit more power um, you know we've seen what WikiLeaks can do uh, Chelsea Manning uh, what you know a hero shows you how they feel about privacy okay privacy's you know like to them we have no right to privacy but as soon as you question their right to privacy oh, all the gloves come off and you get the Bradley Manning treatment <laughs> uh, Chelsea Manning tr treatment, excuse me. Um, okay, so as I've demonstrated, uh, there's really no bigger threat uh, to security than the state. So, uh, you know, but luckily we do have these tools available. So uh, if you reject, I mean, if you, if you reject the state, you're supporting privacy. If you want to support privacy, you have to reject the state. And if you want to enhance your own privacy, do not bother to call your congressman. It's just not going to work. They have no incentive to do anything about your privacy. They don't care. I've shown you what they do. If you want to protect your privacy, learn about some of these tools that are available. Take personal responsibility for your own privacy and for your own security. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Would you agree with the idea that in order to be oppressive, a government has to violate privacy, that privacy therefore is a protector of liberty? Absolutely. Absolutely. There cannot be a state and privacy. They cannot exist side by side. Uh, there's no way to rule over people unless you can con control them. And if people have privacy, then they have the possibility of self-defense, of freedom of contract, freedom of movement. These things are impossible without privacy. So naturally, if your goal is to rule over someone, you need to, you need to do I'm, I'm not being a smart ass or anything, but so what is your idea of government the, in the best sense? I don't know. I don't, what is my idea of government? It's, yeah. a, it's a, a, a monopoly on force within a particular geographic region. I think she's saying, what's your idea? Yeah, what should it be? What's like your the ideal? ideal? Ideal. Well, I'm like Darren, I'm a supporter of the non-aggression principle, which means I don't think that anyone has a right to uh, initiate force against another person. I don't think there's a legitimate ruling class, and I don't think anybody has the right to, to rule another person in any way. So government is there to do what? Uh, it's a monopoly on force by a certain group of people that they can use against the rest of well, people. Well, again, the, in the best way, what would you think? I mean, there's always been a government, you know, right? Here. In, uh, has there? Well, there wasn't a country. Yeah, there wasn't a country. There wouldn't be a country without government. There has to be some organization there. Right, but does it have to use, uh, does it have to be a, a violent monopoly on force? Real quick, could you tell me what it would look like? What were your ideal? Not in the time allotted, but maybe Bob could do a whole other topic on that one later. I think yeah. uh, that would be a good topic. Yeah. 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 Would you suggest going back to the Articles of Confederation, for instance? I think that would be um, from what I know, it's probably better than the, than the Constitution, um, but there was probably a lot of things. And, I mean, that was still sort of people saying, we have the right to rule you. See? I've got it written down. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it. And you might say what kind of government you want, and you'd probably say the least possible. 
Uh, but there has to be, I guess that, that is another topic. What would be the ideal least possible name? Yeah. Uh, well, that would be zero. James, um, now I, um, you're talking mostly here about the state, the national government, and, and we also have a state government and we have local municipal governments. Um, and I, I found over time that my experience with the municipal governments is they're very weak. And, and in terms of living out here in the suburbs, what you run into is a lot of issues where you need um, a stronger government than we have right now. For instance, I like a lot to have some of my privacy out here in the suburbs, but I've got to deal with constantly with uh, drunks, drug addicts, dog barking, crazy people, people breaking every rule and every mm -hmm. regulation there is. And there's no enforcement of any of these rules and regulations, and, and, and you're left pretty much in a world of your own. It's every man for himself out here in suburbia because there is really no effective government. And I, I like the idea of no government, but in practice, if you live out here, it's kind of a drag having no government. Well, maybe the problem is not a lack of government, but it's a lack of ser some certain services that you need. Let's not, perhaps we should expand the, sort of expand the question and say, well, look, I have a problem with, with drunks. I have a problem with criminals. I have a problem with nuisances. These are, these are problems and that require services. Now you could say, well, gee, what's the best way when I need a service or a product, uh, what's the best way to get a low cost and high quality provider? Is it to say, well, you know, we're just going to have one and we're going to make it illegal for them to have any competition. Um, when, when you have an imposed monopoly like that, it's just, you, you know, I think we usually can kind of see that's the result you get. Why should they care whether you, what are you going to, you know. No, they don't care. I understand. Right, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how because I, you I'm can't go to another provider. You can't go to the other provider so and say, you know what, that company's not fulfilling my need. Multiple uh, government providers on the municipal level. I wouldn't use the word government provider. I would just say service provider. So. If I have an issue with, say, um, someone um, abusing drugs and extorting me and causing, you know, problems at two, three, four in the morning, um, who do I call? Like a, a noise problem. Noise problem, uh, perhaps a, a, a violence problem. Well, it's on your property or someone else's property? Uh, it could be on both. Okay. Well, I'd say if it's on your property, then you, you would certainly you know, be within your rights to have a service to protect you from that problem. Uh, what's going on on someone else's property, you might think it's a problem, they might not think it's a problem, but it, you know, it, it's really a matter of, well, how is it affecting you, is it affecting, is it, a, is it, some, is someone initiating force of fraud against you and your property? I, I guess my experience over time is that, you know, I, I, I've come to realize that I, I actually appreciate stronger local government than what we have today. Um, well, then what you're saying is, okay, well, just so you understand what the consequences are, which I think I've shown, that, you know, every time you ask, you can say, well, look, we, we have a problem with noise, okay, and that's, I, I'm going to go and ask government for that problem, solve that problem for me. They'll say, okay, you know, we've been wanting to have a little extra power. Uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna go door to door now with our with our decibel meter, and we're going to lock up anybody that, that, that brings over, you know, 0.2 decibels. Or maybe we'll have to go inside and check to make sure that people don't have too many amps on their stereo. Yeah, I might be okay with that. Let <laughs> <laughs> uh, remind you of your youth. <laughs> I, had, I had two questions. Um, one, you brought up uh, stop and frisk, and um, might sound a bit stumbling around here because I can't precisely uh, state the case or the details, but I'm curious if you might be able to open it up a bit. I know that I think it was the ACLU case, might have made it to the Supreme Court about the Fourth Amendment uh, being, you know, violations, specifically in New York, and I believe that the judge ruled. You know that it was unconstitutional, and because you're saying that these things are currently going on, um, uh, and then whoever's up there, Bloomberg or whoever the hell is like, oh, this is absurd. You know, um, what do you think that that has? I don't know, a lot of it had to do with racial profiling. So, uh, do you think that in terms of stop and frisk, do you see that there's any 
light at the end of the tunnel? Like, do you think that things are getting... You know, I, I'm not in a position to say. I remember some kind of court case or something saying, oh, they have to, you know, be, they have they didn't do X, Y, Z before they went and harassed these people, okay? Uh, maybe it'll make it a little harder. Maybe it won't. Uh, NYPT, NYPD is notorious for not giving a crap about what the laws are anyway. <laughs> so they don't really care. They've been, the, the state legislatures tried to, tr tried to uh, rein them in over and over again. They're like the seventh largest army in the world, and they say, we don't care. Right. So I think um, that's quoted from their own mouth. Right? Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're like you know, they're like we got we got we got tanks and we got you know, they're they're so proud of their power that they don't really. Uh, the, 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 I think the only effective resistance to stop and frisk is uh, citizenry that knows what their rights are and has video cameras and is ready to to, to take it on. Um, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Oh. Do you think it's possible to have gun control and privacy at the same time? Absolutely not. How, how could you? Um, like I, as I showed, you know, as soon as you, as soon as you say, well, sure, you know what? I'm going to fill out a form, and I'm, you'll know where all the guns are. Look at I mean, this. That example was an incredible security risk for everybody there. I don't know how many additional robberies and rapes <laughs> occurred uh, as a result of that, but there's no doubt any burglar or rapist um, in those counties is gonna, was going to consult that map before going out on a crime. So, any other questions? Actually, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to step outside my moderator role just for a moment. Sure. Uh, just a clarification, uh, maybe on some comments you made with Ellen. Um, would you be advocating a private police force, basically? Uh, in other words, uh, uh, in other words, if I had a problem with a neighbor, uh, you feel that a private company would, could intervene and, and uh, help to deal with the situation? Uh, I think a, a comp uh, competitive marketplace for these services I'm sure would be great. We already have lots of private security. Sure. I don't know if I'd use private police well, as, as, private a, as a security. word, that but for security, we already we already have it all over the place. If you're a bank, do you do you trust your 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 bank to, with a 911 call, or do you pay some guys to stand there and protect it? Well, there's there's a lot of reasons to do that. That's right. The, the, just the complication, though, if you had several different um, security uh, firms, so to speak, and your neighbor decided to hire one, and you decided to hire another, <laughs> uh, what would happen? How would those two firms uh, deal with each other under the circumstances? And who would moderate this? Process. Well, you know, and you're talking about something that would be very, it could be very complex, and, yeah. and uh, we could go, we could talk about it at, at length. But I would just maybe use as an example: um, we all have different phone companies, right? But yet we're able to call one another, and it's not a problem. If the need, if there's a market need to have these services interact with each other, then that's going to be one of the features customers look for. When I'm when I'm deciding which security company I'm going to work with. That's one of the things I'm going to consider. Well, how are you going to interact with the other security companies in my community? What if there's a dispute? Who's, who's going to resolve the dispute? You know, these are factors that you would use while selecting the company. And it would be up to the companies to go to you, the consumer, and say, look, we've got the best system. I've got arrangements with everybody here. We've got uh, money in escrow in case we do something wrong. Uh, we're independently audited by this other agency over here. And uh, you know, and we we promise not. You know, our guarantee is we're not going to do. We're not going to start grabbing hippies for smoking a joint. But I guess the thing is, I, mean, I guess the, the, the thing that Owen brought up. If you have a neighbor and you're you're at odds with that neighbor, he hires one company, you hire another, and then it's it's sure his work. Awesome. Well. You know, I mean, is that basically what's going to happen? Is, well, is, is that what land type of situation? Is, I mean, is that the result consumers would want? I don't know. It's not a question of if I if Owen wants as long to be as he's dead, I don't care. Owen wants to be protected. <laughs> Owen wants to be protected, <laughs> and the neighbor wants to be protected, and each one has their own case to make. Right. And then if it escalates, why are you shooting him? What are you doing to your neighbor that makes him fire against you? Well, the thing is, he may just be crazy. And uh -oh. he can hire somebody to take really your security force. Right. So, really that security force. Right. And yeah, well, then it can escalate, though. That's the problem. Well, and it, and it can resolve the, the same way it that's can today. Well, that's what I said. That the way to resolve these conflicts would be one of the features you look for in the service. But I'm looking for my service to do what I wanted to do. Owen's looking for his service. 
to do what he, he wants it to do, and what if they're at odds with each other? They're well, not the same service. Let me ask you this. If, you, if you're looking at the brochure uh, on the, your prospective security <laughs> service, and they said, you know, look we, look at our history. We've gone to war with every other <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right? Is that, is that the kind That's of the one I want. <laughs> That says, look, we, you know, we peacefully negotiated conflict after conflict after yeah. conflict after yeah, conflict. Fair, yeah. If you can actually have that kind of a system, I'm, well, I'm not sure. What, what I'm just saying is, if there's a market demand for it, it, that the parallel is a market opportunity for somebody that can provide that. And I don't think anybody wants to have shootouts. I mean, you know, let's let's also compare it to what we have right now, where even you admit it's uh, it's not getting the job done for you. Um, certainly, uh, with the you know, we've got this system that puts, um, you know, we've got two million people in cages right now. One in a hundred adults is in a cage. Well, I agree. I'm saying that's not, that's not the best solution. That's not So when, we, when we're talking about possibilities, let's not compare it to some mythical, fantasy, perfect ideal. Let's compare it to the reality of what we have today, well, which is absolutely, absolute failure. Well, I think that there's a lot of uh, room for, for exploration there. I, I you know, I, I'm not trying to, to, to shoot. Let's make that the next <laughs> democracy high plug. Thank we'll, you. we'll pull the plug on democracy once and for all. Thank you very much. <laughs>I think we're going to try to have some beers that were at um, Media. What's the name of that place? Pinocchio's. Pinocchio's. Yeah. Is that right? It's called Pinocchio's. It is. It has like they have like 800 beers. Must have some good beers. You're lying. Like, like, they're not lying. How many? You're lying. How many? You're lying. How many? You're lying. I'm sure they do. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.